Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to B-Tech. Basil here with an HTC One M8 and a Samsung Galaxy S6. The Galaxy S6 newly announced at MWC 2015. The HTC One M8 announced last year. Now we've got our hands on the M9, but unfortunately we don't have it now, so we can't compare it with the Samsung Galaxy S6. Instead, you're gonna have to settle for its predecessor, but that's no bad thing. The HTC One M8 is a beautiful phone. All metal body, front-facing stereo speakers, high resolution, front-facing camera really really does feel like one of the most premium devices we've ever held and it kind of showed up Samsung's previous flagship the Galaxy S5 which was so plasticky but Samsung has learned it's made a new phone the Galaxy S6 with a metal body glass front and back and a really expensive in hand feel accompanying the Galaxy S6 Edge you've also got a 5.1 inch quad HD super AMOLED display on here so let's start off by telling you about the whole design of this phone and it feels really good. The sides are easy to get a hold of. It does look a lot like an iPhone, especially at the base of it. But head on, it really looks like a Galaxy. It looks like a Galaxy S4. So we're kind of glad Samsung's really figuring out its own design identity. On the front of the device is a camera front facing F1.9. You've also got a physical home button with two capacitor buttons, multitasking and back. On the right hand side, you can see you've got a power button and a mic nano USB uh, SIM slot, sorry. Down at the base, a micro USB port and a loudspeaker. No stereo speakers, just some mono speakers. So unfortunately, uh, we don't anticipate the quality will be mind blowing from this, but we could be mistaken. When we get the device in for review, we'll give you something more conclusive. 3.5 mil jack, left hand side, volume buttons up at the top an infrared blaster and yes guys this thing and indeed that thing they are both tv remote controls on the flip side 16 megapixel rear facing camera optical image stabilization and a heart rate monitor loaded up with a flash you can see the back cover attracts fingerprints very very readily it's available in a range of colors does feel really expensive and we'd say those fingerprints are well worth it by contrast to the Samsung Galaxy S5. Plonking that down for a second we can bring the One M8 into frame. This really was one of our favorite phones of last year. Not only does it show off my Cat Max beautifully but you can also see you've got a full HD 5 inch display, SLCD3, great great viewing angles, really pure whites, front facing speakers, 5 megapixel front facing camera. On the right hand side you've got a micro uh, SD card slot and a volume rocker. Down at the base is a micro USB connector and a 3.5mm jack. Left hand side no buttons but you do have a nano SIM card slot. Up at the top is a power button and an infrared blaster. Now one thing we will say you just have to take a second to bear how beautiful the rounded corners just curve around. I really didn't think Samsung would be able to match that but the HTC One and M8 and Samsung Galaxy S6 don't feel too dissimilar in terms of premium factor in the hand. In fact, the fact that the Samsung Galaxy S6 is so much thinner really does make it feel kind of, well, kind of like we'd want to put one in our pocket. Back to the One M8 on the flip side, ultra pixel 4 megapixel camera, dual flash, one warm, one cool, so that you can get the best white balance possible. Plonking them down, screens. Full HD SLCD3, Quad HD Super AMOLED, a pixel density of 577 versus 441. We are left wanting for nothing with 441 pixels per inch. This looks great and we couldn't find a pixel if you paid us. But boy, this looks, well, it also looks great. What really is impressive is just how it kind of like feels like it pops off the screen a little bit. Um, but side by side, we wouldn't be able to tell too much difference, which suggests that it's gotten to that level of imperceptible. But if we were having holding this, using this, we wouldn't be complaining. AMOLED means deep dark blacks and vibrant colors as well. As far as what is inside those screens, it is Android 5.0 on both of these devices. That's Lollipop. You've got HTC Sense on top of that. We've seen the new version of Sense, Sense 7, but this is Sense 6. You've got an applications tray. You've got a variable number of home screens. You can pinch the home screens and you can put widgets on here. And you've got Blink Feed. Blink Feed throws a load of stuff on here, whether it's social media or news aggregation. Pull down from the top and you can reveal your notifications tray. Very stock Lollipop as it's a two tiered notifications tray that also reveals quick toggles. What's really nice about Sense 7 is the fact you can customize things with themes, but Sense 6 doesn't have that. That's pretty much the extent of Sense 6. Of course, you do have a few camera enhancements and other things which we will come on to later. 
as for the Samsung Galaxy S6, it's touch whiz, and you've got a similar kind of thing to the left-hand side that Samsung kind of copied from HTC, but it doesn't work anywhere near as well because it's a lot slower. This is flipboard briefing. Luckily, Samsung, just like HTC, allows you to turn this off. Just pinch through, or you used to be able to turn this off, um, and it's in the settings. You've also got a variable number of home screens that you can populate with widgets and shortcuts. You can also, ah, oh, we see, Samsung's installed themes on here, so this is something that we weren't briefed on. So themes will naturally be downloadable through the store, um, just like with Sense 7. Jumping out of that, pull down from the top, notifications tray, and rather than have a two-tiered two notifications tray, like stock, or even a two-finger pull down, instead you just have this scrolling bar at the top. We're not sure if that's because this isn't final build yet, but time will tell. As for the applications tray, you can organize it into folders or shortcuts. That's pretty much touch whiz. It's not as bloated as it used to be. You've got S Health, you haven't really got much else there. So that's really, really commendable that Samsung has stripped everything back really nicely. Now, if we take a look at what's on the phone's camera-wise, you've got front-facing cameras. An f1.9 aperture accompanies the front-facing snapper on the Samsung Galaxy S6, and Samsung claims it's going to be phenomenal at low light. This is by contrast to the high-resolution 5-megapixel camera on the HTC One M8. Flipping them round, the HTC One M8 has an ultra-pixel camera. What we love about this camera is the fact that it has full manual settings. So if we just open up the camera settings, oh, we're in our video mode now, open up our camera, we can go to manual, and we can control the focus, bring it right down, we can change the shutter speed back to auto, and now we can make sure we are at the closest focal range, for example, so that we can take a picture of our Samsung Galaxy S6. Now, one thing we will say, first off, that was a bit of a faff. It doesn't always need to be that complicated, but you didn't get as much detail on the HTC One M8 as you do on high resolution cameras, and that was one of our biggest bugbears with it. Now, the M9 is uh, different. It has a 20 megapixel camera, but we will say, from our experience, the Samsung Galaxy S6's camera just kills it a little bit. It's way too early to tell, but if we power it off, we can double tap the home button, launch the camera, flip to the main camera, I'll say goodbye, and take a picture. If I take a picture of the base of the HTC One, my hand was moving, but the optical image stabilization took care of it, and that looks pretty sweet to me. All in all, therefore, we think Samsung's taken stock of what people have said, as really reflected in the specs. You've got a Qualcomm Snapdragon um, 801 processor in the HTC One M8. Samsung's made their own processor. You've got an octa-core Exynos processor in here. Four of the cores are clocked at 2.1 gigahertz, four are clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. You've also got three gig of DDR4 RAM, or the equivalent for mobile. That means that it's gonna be more readily available to all your needs, basically. So Samsung assures us this version of TouchWiz will not lag. We'll believe it when we see it after a month of use, but we certainly hope that is the case, as it would be a first. As far as the batteries go, you've got a 2600 milliamp battery in the HTC One M8 and a 2600 or 2550 milliamp battery in the Samsung Galaxy S6. It's little wonder that the battery's so small given how slender this device is. But Samsung says you can get this thing to full charge in half the time it takes to charge an iPhone 6. On top of that, it supports the two major standards for wireless charging, WPC and PMA as well. So it'll work with any wireless charging play or virtually any charging play. Ultimately, we are, well, impressed is the word we're looking for. We love the HTC One M8, and it definitely feels like current phone. It feels rich in the hand, but so too does the Samsung Galaxy S6, and with those specs, it's really wet our appetites for what Samsung has to offer going forward. Cannot wait to get one in for review. Hopefully you've enjoyed my hands on with it. If you have, click that like button. If you've got any questions about it, fire them in the comments section below and I will endeavor to answer. Also, if you like BTEC, make sure you click that like button. And if you want to stay on top of everything we do, just subscribe. Thanks for watching.